You are cordially invited to attend High Tea with the Metal Duchess, brought to you proudly by Pure Grain Audio. We'll be sipping on the finest teas with South Africa's finest bands and getting to know them and their music. But just like everything in life, there's always a twist. Seeing as this is High Tea, guests will be required to be on their best behavior. The lady's maid has given them a lesson in proper High Tea etiquette, and should they break the quorum, we will make them pay for their sins. Don't worry, their hard-earned money will go to charity. And while the Duchess is away on said charity events, the lady's maid will take the reins and entertain our guests with a challenge or two in our parlor games. Welcome to High Tea, the Metal Duchess's way. I just went for tea with Meghan Markle <clears throat> and I saw their offspring. But then I got excited because Chaos Doctrine came over for tea. Hello, Chaos Doctrine. Welcome to High Tea with the Middle Duchess. Hello, Middle Duchess. So, please introduce yourselves. We'll start with you. I'm Dr. D, vocalist for Chaos Doctrine. Lord Alec, guitar. Mr. Marbury, drums. I'm full. Uh, bass <laughs> and backing vocals. Please tell me about Chaos Doctrine. We are real from Johannesburg. We play industrial metal, tinge of death, blood thrash, with a big layer of industrial rock on top. Is industrial metal big in South Africa? I think we're the only ones, eh? We're not. Yeah. But, uh, from Joburg, most definitely. Yeah. Countrywide, I'd probably assume Terminatrix. Terminatrix, maybe? yeah. Why do you think it's not so popular in South Africa? If I had to take a guess, I would just say because it's so much work. <laughs> you know, a normal band writes a song, mm. couple of riffs, drum beat, bass line, vocals. Mm. Gals Doctrine writes a song, couple of riffs, drum beat, vocals, bass. What sampling loops do we need for this? Uh, what is this going to look like live? What about this part? What about that part? Alex solo a little bit less so we can squeeze a bit of industrial in this. I also think, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a bit of a misconception about industrial. Industrial worldwide is pretty big if you think about bands like Ministry. But there aren't that many of them arising anymore. So have you ever played a show with Terminatrix? And if so, are there any plans to play a show with Terminatrix since you're in the same genre? Well, Terminatrix are in Cape Town. And we haven't played Cape Town yet. Definitely something to consider. Yeah, they are coming up to Johannesburg for a show soon. Yeah, the sirens are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell me a bit about the band. You guys have been going forever <laughs> in metal years, of course. Yeah. Um, how has it progressed? How has the scene progressed? How has your music actually progressed? The Chaos Doctrine started in roughly 2010, 20, 2011, the subhuman race. We changed our name to Chaos Doctrine. We had another guitarist at that stage, who was an old friend of ours, and he left, he moved to New Zealand. So uh, we were in the market for guitarists. I phoned three people and three people gave me the same name, and that was uh, Lord Alex Surridge. So I uh, got him over, he said, okay, fine, let's do this. So we, we're doing this. So uh, Ralph was our founding drummer, and he left, he went to the coast, and he came back a couple of years later. So um, how the scene has gone, I think it's gone through the same ups and downs that it's gone through in my entire lifetime. I think it's at a lower end now than I've seen. I started playing gigs in 96, 97, where 100 people was a small show. And uh, at the moment, yeah, I think it's a bit lower than like 150. Yeah. yeah, the 90s, uh, even 2000s were actually pretty good in Cape Town. Uh, we had some very good bands uh, and uh, some very good following. So much so that, uh, you know, it got a band at that stage, it got us to play Vakken. Yeah, I mean, they're very good bands, VOD. Uh, and such, you know, we, we used to get quite uh, quite a bit with them, um, Pothole, uh, some very amazing bands down in Cape Town at that stage. Coming to Joburg was uh, a bit of a thing because Johannesburg has a, has a sort of a different stigma and a different vibe to how uh, it operates. But once you're gigging here, it's, it, it's pretty good. It has gone down uh, for us, definitely, for a lot of bands, in fact, it's gone Going down. Um, I started playing gigs in the early 90s and I guess all the way through the 90s it wasn't that hard to pack out a, a, a venue like Roxy's. I was in Sacrifice and Tyburn and on a Saturday night you could fill that place up with two or three really really good bands and I think as the years have gone by I think people are just becoming a bit complacent and they're just, you no, know, you definitely don't get as many people at shows anymore. I think uh, people have internet and people have Netflix. It's just easier to Netflix and chill than go watch a show. <laughs> you know I mean? Maybe another problem in our scene is the whole festival culture that we've got going on here. 
if I get to see 20 bands for 100 rand, why am I going to pay 100 rand for three bands or 50 rand for three bands? Um, why would I go watch three bands next weekend if I can wait two weekends and see 20 bands? And that's maybe something we need to think about as a, as a collective scene. I think maybe at some point the metal bands in this country need to talk to each other a little bit and say, hey guys, you know what, maybe we need to handle this like a strategic business. And I mean, not to take the fun out of it, but um, just say, how, what, what can we do to make this more attractive for people? Because none of us like to carry this mic stand and all that gear for our girlfriends and the barman. You know what I mean? All the other bands. <laughs> I mean, I like playing for Carlos, but you know, he's seen us a couple. Of <laughs> <laughs> so Carlos is from Deadline. <laughs> Let's talk about the mic stand. How and why? I think there's yeah two two reasons behind the stand. Firstly, because it's industrial, we play industrial. I've always wanted my own custom mic stand. So, H.R. Geiger is dead, so we couldn't get hold of him. And for surfing Facebook like we do on weekends. And uh, there's this guy in Cape Town called Steel Punk Designs, and he was making lamps and all kinds of stuff from bike parts and castaway metal. So we had a quick conversation, and five minutes later, I booked a mic stand. So it came in via the mail. It weighs about, I don't know, 2,000 kilograms or something. So if there's any roadies out there that would like to... you there. You said it came via the mail. Yeah. Not, not air mail. Not like in an envelope. <laughs> I would hope not. No, it, it literally, it came from Cape Town via courier, obviously. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so if there's anyone out there who would like to be my roadie, vocalists usually don't have roadies, but I would like one just to help me. They don't normally understand. carry anything. Yes, I yeah. mean, just carry a guilt. <laughs> just for and shame. guilt. Just <laughs> And shame. And shame for life decisions. Yeah. Speaking of roadie, you have an advertisement on your social media. So anybody who's watching this, go to Chaos Doctor and social media. They are currently looking for a roadie. A sophisticated roadie. A sophisticated roadie. Technical crew, not just carrying stuff. <laughs> Preferably a sir or a lord. <laughs> yes. Preferably a sir or a lord. With a uh, good lower back <laughs> So, how has the search been going so far? Have you had anybody come forward? Have we? I didn't put something out. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'm pretty sure, is a rant. That is a rant. with your mouth full, sir. Oh. We, will have to we have our first rant. We <laughs> have our bouncer. There you go, doctor. We are paying forward. <laughs> Take my silver. <laughs> Take my silver. So, we haven't had anyone come forward yet, but we're still looking. It's also, you know, Facebook advertising rules, etc. Those things are interesting. So we are we're keeping a look at. Ideally, it would be somebody who's into metal, who's into us. Um, somebody young who wants to learn a lot of stuff. Alec works in, in audio tech, and somebody can learn a lot from him. If we could just clone Alec, it would be perfect because he'd be the perfect sound manager, sound engineer, everything while we're on stage. But he has to be up there with us, which is quite a problem. And you just put out a new EP. Yep. Tell us more. The EP is a couple of tracks from the album that we put out. Took the thought process of either adding in more elements or taking out some elements from the original track. So let's say we, you know one of the tracks would have had quite a bit of uh, sampling in it. We thought let's strip it bare and have it as a straightforward metal song. Let's say, or another one would purely be you know more industrial based even more so than, than the original. That was the, the process of actually trying to find the right songs, work them out. I think there's a song on there in Afrikaans yeah, as well, yeah, so with alternate lyrics. Changing it up, just keeping people interested, um, trying something new, because these steps help us with the next album, you know, which we're already working towards. What's coming up next in Chaos Doctrine's world? Uh, we're focusing on recording now. We've got about four or five songs done. Yeah, uh, yeah various stages and, uh, of completion. Some strong songs, I think. Very yeah. excited about that. Yeah. We're busy with a little international collaboration that will blow a couple of old school metal heads. Ooh, brains do you want to spill the tea? Spill the tea. <laughs> spill the tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, just say, we'll just say it's an interesting character from Europe. So that will come out in the next couple of months. We're really thinking about getting newer, fresher sounds, obviously always keeping the industrial, trying to keep it interesting, but also exploring other parts of metal that we haven't, like with uh, our track The Right, yeah. we went deep into Stoner Valley with that thing, and with Stoner Valley I mean the stoner kind of metal sound that was Black Sabbath in the 70s, and we slapped some 
death metal and industrial on top of it, because that's what we do. All right? That was awfully close, though. Awesome. I know. Close. I was going to say far. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's going to be so proud. No, 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 no naughty words. And I notice you still do hard copy. Yep. yep. And people still buy them. Yep. To be honest with you, I make physical copies because I want one, mm -hmm. and I know my band wants ones. I've got them on a shelf. We're all collectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, every now and then, somebody wants one. That's cool, and we like to give them away because we want people to enjoy our music. So, <coughs> being in the scene for so long, what is the one piece of advice you give to an up-and-coming band starting in their mother's garage today? Oldie. <laughs> <laughs> Never give up. I guess. You want to create music that you love because, you know, Tony Iommi has been playing Paranoid since 1969 and only because he loves that song. And you want to get a view from people outside there of what your music is like. So is your music good enough to be put out there? So we are, the, uh, we are our worst critics when, you know, it's a bit scary pitching up and playing a riff and telling these guys what do you think because you think if someone's going to go, that's crap. And that's what you need in a band. So that, because if you don't criticize your own music, how can you? I said crap. Crap's not a swear word. <laughs> it's a swear word. It is. Anyway, I think I finished my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, breakage fee. <laughs> Any last words, Chaos Doctor? After doing this, uh, we're playing band for about 26 years now. Um, just try and keep it interesting. It, whatever you do, just just keep keep trying to have fun somehow. At the end of the day, that's you in an old age home thinking back on on the cool times you had. You know? Yeah. So yeah. that's me. I'll add. Mm -hmm. I'll add. <laughs> and if you're really into Chaos Doctrine, you really want to help us get our name out there, we've got a group on Facebook called uh, Chaos Disciples. Look that up. Put a joiner request in and have a conversation with us. We do pre-releases there. Everything we do goes on there first. There's stuff on there that only those people get to see, mostly because we don't think the general public should see it. Um, we keep it interesting, we keep it fun. That's also a nice forum for people to connect with us, talk about our personal lives, which which people then will. Thank you very much, Cass Doctor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello and welcome back. Unfortunately, the Metal Duchess has had to um, leave so that she can have a dress fitting for our ball tonight. So while she is away, I've asked the boys from Chaos Doctrine to help me with napkin folding. So I presented the boys with a variety of napkins and some cutlery. And what they have to do is they have to do to the napkin folding, which would hold said cutlery. So boys, you have to make sure that the cutlery can stay in the napkin, but it has to look fancy for it is a ball tonight. So you have exactly three minutes to impress me with what you can do. <laughs> right. Everyone ready? Yeah. Okay, three, two, one, start. I have a hair appointment, so I have to do this quickly. <laughs> You're not getting your ball gown sorted. Yeah, no, my ball gown is sorted, it's being pressed. <laughs> I will be dressing as Rasputin. There you go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> okay. You win. I see some very fancy looking things going on here. I think it's making devil horns. I like it. <laughs> uh, Is there a rule against <laughs> collaboration and helping? No. No. What do you want to do with this? I don't I'm know. Just doing I'm just doing it. it out. So it pokes up in yeah. a triangle. Something. Yeah. Oh, diaper. 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 That yeah. looks red. That looks red. That's what she wants. Hide the green. Hide the green. Yeah, that was joking. Okay, now it's devil horns. Pieces. Now it's devil horns. Sort of. So Something. somebody in the ballroom is going to be having two sets of cutlery. Yeah, oh, yeah. You can, it's a close, you close call. Oh, it's probably the easiest. We can put a candle there for now. Yes, there we go. That I like it. Completely <laughs> something other. All right, so is everyone finished? It does appear that like I ruined mine by helping Alec. It happens <laughs> often. All right, so the time is up. Uh, fingers away, hands away. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look over here, then, shall we? So I see we've got a couple of the rolled up version, which is very diner-esque, I must say. Not yep. very ball etiquette, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> and also you've unfortunately defolded the... I should probably be... Which wouldn't be acceptable yeah. for a, a ball, for the metal duchess. 
So I see we have an attempt here. It, the candle <laughs> fell away, I'm afraid. So just explain to me what you were trying to do here. Um, probably trying to make it as quick and easy to to <laughs> to, to, to flip open and get to my my cutlery. Ah, uh, so you have more tactics. So yeah, you can eat as soon definitely. as possible. That's that seems to be the way. And what have we got on the next one here? Just. Uh, I like the teapot after. Folded it up all weird. Well, it keeps moving, so I thought I'll just <laughs> use this, you know, I can't get it back. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I saw it a little bit. So we have a previous shot here below. And last but not least? Yeah, pretty much, much of the same, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does look much better than the first one. Yes, actually. Yeah. It looks like the cutlery's nicely nuzzled in there, so... Alright, so I think... Who should I go for? I mean, this one is incredibly ambitious, and he actually did something very different from the rest. And I'm pretty sure I've never seen this before at a ball. As for the others, I would say the other one is also very pretty. The other two are very similar, I'm afraid. It's what oh. you would find in a common dining area. Oh, which, so common. Let's face it, the high, you know, the metal duchess would not approve of. We have high standards it's at this establishment. So, common, bro. I will say I will go for the third one just because it looks very neat and folded. It's nicely nuzzled in with cutlery. But I want oh, to wow. give a spell. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. You went round The prize is prize. here for you. Thank so, you congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I hope it's a hair product. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Is it a hair product? product. <laughs> So now you can do the washing up. <laughs> well, I really do. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, Thank you very much. And join us next time for Party Games. <laughs> <laughs>